Hello, everybody. I'm pleased today to share with you what is new in the Building and Civil Structures design application in the 2022X FDO2 release. In this release, we have three brand new features, levels, walls, and slabs. There are also openings that you can make in these walls and slabs. Building levels now are composed of four planes and there are four ways to create these levels. You can create the levels by parameters. You can create them by, an ex by selecting an existing set of planes. You can create them by importing an Excel spreadsheet or by selecting a building product that has been imported from an IFC file for design. The levels themselves are composed of four different planes, the top of slab plane, bottom of slab plane, finished floor plane, and a finished ceiling plane. These planes can be edited either as a group, individually, or as you saw in an Excel table. In the concrete tab on the far right now, there's a slab button. This slab can be created from an individual plane or a level set, and it takes in either a closed boundary curve or a volumetric boundary to create the profile of the slab. So wherever there's an intersection with the plane and that exterior boundary, it will create a slab. Slab openings are created from either a curve or a volume and the intersections will be computed automatically. The new wall command can be hosted on a line, curve, or attached to a volume as input. There are five primary controls within the wall command, width, side, priority, and top and bottom limits. The top and bottom limits can be free or connected to a plane. If it's connected to a level plane, it can easily pass from one level to another by using those little arrows on the side. The priority option controls how corner intersections are resolved, which wall takes priority and pushes the other out of the way when they can meet at, a, at an intersection point. If two walls have the same priority, they'll miter each other, just like what you see up in the corner there. Once you've created a wall, you can always go back and edit it, as you see here, changing the priority or the positioning relative to the base curve. Wall openings function just like slab openings. If you have a volume and a curve, it will automatically find a wall that it's uh, connected to to cut through it, or you can specify additional walls if you want to cut multiple walls with the same curve. These new wall features can be grouped and instantiated as power copies, opening up a world of automation potential. If an object type is present in the database, here's an example of one that I created to automate the framing of walls, you can attach it directly within the wall feature dialog box. So here, let's edit some walls and add that object type. We'll search for it in the database, select one. And if the object type contains a UDF, it will automatically be instantiated into the model. And all of the parameters that have been declared within the UDF will be available in the dialog box for editing. If an engineering template is also present in the object type, you can publish that wall. And by using the change LOD command, instantiate the engineering template from the object type into your model. The resulting geometry in this video isn't much more detailed than the UDF, but in reality, that engineering template would contain all of the information necessary for manufacturing and construction. So with that, I hope you're as excited as we are about these new features and the capabilities. With object types and component-based design, you see you're able to easily go from a concept level of detail model to the construction twin, and we know that this is going to save massive amounts of time for, for those who have built up your catalog of object types. Thank you again for watching and best of luck with the new 2022 XFDO2 release.